time. Hello, judges. Welcome to Chicago. We're finally here, once again, reunited. And now it's our last day. Let's finally celebrate. It's maybe a little too early or way too early for champagne, but I have an even better idea. But first, please relax and enjoy. Everything that I say will be mentioned in your note cards in front of you, and I'll let you guys know once you can start taking notes for the taste descriptors. Let's begin. So I'm Charity, nice to meet you all. And I live in the Champagne region of France. In the Champagne region of France, this is a magical region where the Champagne wine is made. In the Champagne wine, blending is key, creating a sense of balance that is not found naturally, but acquired only through human intervention. So blending brings complexity. By blending different plots, varieties, and reserve wines, the goal is to reunite in one sip the complete sensorial experience that a champagne can offer. And the truth is, I love champagne, but I also love coffee. So as a coffee professional in the Champagne region, I believe in mutual learning, and I believe that coffee can taste even better. So collaborating with Romainon, a new generation champagne maker, I'll be integrating his blending techniques in my coffee approach today. My vision, it's simple. It's to recreate a coffee that is more complex than just one. I'll be blending together three coffees today. Bringing together aroma, flavor, aftertaste, acidity, sweetness, and mouthfeel in one perfect harmony by blending the elegance of a geisha with fruity flavors from newer fermentation methods. So the first coffee that I'm using today is from a very special friend of mine from Jose and his family at Abu Coffee Farm in Panama. This is his geisha natural lot number 15. This was one of my favorite lots of the year, and what this brings to my blend is this complex acidity that I love. So I'll be adding 30% into my blend. The second coffee. I really wanted to elevate the sweetness. And so together with my other friend, Jorge, from Finca Immaculada in Colombia, Eugenoides, known for its sweetness. I'll be adding this to my blend, but this is also a special lot that went through a six-day natural anaerobic fermentation. And so this gives me a long sweetness aftertaste in my coffee. I'll be adding 10%. And now, finally, the last coffee. The last coffee is a beautiful coffee that I tasted from Paul from Mikava Estate in Colombia. This is a carbonic macerated geisha. And this form of anaerobic fermentation that is borrowed from the wine industry really brings this complex citrus fruit note to my coffee and also a long and evolving aftertaste. I'll be adding 60% to complete my blend. Perfect. Judges, so all of, me, all of my coffees were lightly roasted one week ago with high energy, short roast times, and dropped at low temperatures below 200 degrees Celsius. And for those of you that are from the US, that's equivalent to 392 degrees Fahrenheit. This really brings out the delicate vibrancy and the bright acidity in my coffee. And now, the challenge. A Brunia blend is consistency. So I've specifically chosen my favorite dripper, the Hario Switch. The switch mechanism allows me to integrate immersion in my brews, giving me more stability and consistency. And as you can see here, I've also replaced the glass dripper with the plastic Mugen dripper for higher heat retention, and also the star-shaped groove line lowers my chances of channeling. And now, my recipe of today is 14 grams of coffee, medium fine grind to 190 grams of water. I'm using the smaller ratio of 1 to 13.5 to bring out the maximum sweetness for this coffee. The water temperature is at 91 degrees Celsius or 196 degrees Fahrenheit. I'm using a higher water TDS of 120 ppm to maximize the extraction of fruit flavors. And now, as you can see, I'm doing a two-pour recipe. My target TDS is 1.4, giving me the most balanced cup. Judges, are you guys ready now? Let's start taking some notes. So let's begin with the aroma. The aroma of this coffee is medium intensity. 
you'll find orange, mandarin, and lavender. The flavor, medium plus intensity in all three stages. You'll find notes of orange again, red grape, and a touch of violet flowers. Flavor when the coffee is cool, orange followed by red grape. The aftertaste of this coffee is long and lingering. It is medium plus intensity in all three stages. When the coffee is hot to warm, you'll have an aftertaste on orange marmalade, orange jam. And when the coffee is hot, you'll have an aftertaste of dried apricots and the orange marmalade that comes back out. The acidity. The acidity is beautiful in this coffee. It is medium intensity in all three stages. The coffee, the acidity when the coffee is hot to warm, it is citric, just like in an orange. And with the acidity when it's cool, please enjoy the tartaric acidity, just like in red grapes. Now the sweetness of this coffee is medium plus intensity in all three stages. When the coffee is hot to warm, you will have this sugar cane sweetness. And when cool, still the sugar cane, but now a touch of fruit juice sweetness that comes from the eugenoides. And now finally, my favorite, mouthfeel. Mouthfeel of this coffee is medium intensity in all three stages. When the coffee is hot to warm, you will have a mouthfeel that is more syrupy. And when the coffee is cool, the mouthfeel is a little more smoother and silkier. Judges, I invite you to follow my drinking procedure as I believe this is the best way for you to enjoy this cup of coffee. So let us begin by enjoying the aromas directly from this carafe. And this carafe is very special. Let me explain why. So this carafe has two inner ridges which creates turbulence as you swirl, which further releases more aroma. So please hold on to the carafe, swirl six times, and enjoy the aroma. And then I'll pour the coffee into your glasses once you're ready. This one's for you, please enjoy. There you go. This one's for you, please enjoy. And this one's for you, please enjoy. I'll be right back. I'll just clean up my station a little bit. Are we ready, judges? Sorry, I really wish we had more time. <laughs> May I? Thank you so much. So, I've carefully selected these Avensi tasting glasses to further enhance your coffee drinking experience. May I please serve you? Thank you. So they combine the science and engineering of wine glasses. May I? Thank you for the wait. The shape enhances aroma, and the glass and the thickness improves mouthfeel and the texture of this coffee. Judges, now just like a champagne producer, just like my friend Romain, my role as a coffee brewer is simple. It's to find the best coffee for you, find the best blending ratio, and reunite in one sip the complete sensorial experience that a coffee can offer. What is special about today's coffee is that it reunites different countries, communities, and industries. Because I believe that together, we are stronger. It was truly my humble pleasure to brew for you today. This is possibly your first coffee of the day. I hope that you'll enjoy it. And now, let's celebrate. As, in, as we say in French, santé and time. Give it up for the competitor representing France, Charity Chung. Yeah. So welcome back. We are here at Charity's table. Uh, the competitor representing France who just gave the performance of her lifetime. First question is always, how are you feeling? I don't know, really. Like all emotions all at once right now. <laughs> happy, relieved, still a little nervous, but. If you happy. had to guess, what is your heart rate? 
A hundred and thirty-five, I'd say. I mean, you basically <laughs> just ran a marathon in ten minutes, right? Uh, talk a little bit about your performance. How do you think you did? I think I did okay. I think I was a little bit more nervous than I thought because it was so quiet for once. Like I wasn't used to quiet. But I, I thought it was very serene. Like you had this serene calmness over you. It was very, oh. very beautiful to watch. I don't think it was. You didn't come across nervous at all. Okay. It was very impressive. Thank yes. you. I'm glad I didn't show it. <laughs> Absolutely. So tell us a little bit about the coffee that yeah. you did prepare for the judges. Okay, so it's a very special blend, actually. So there are three coffees inside. The first coffee is a coffee from Abu Coffee Farm in Panama, a geisha natural lot number 15. Um, and then the second coffee is eugenoides. So I put um, 1.5 grams of eugenoides into my blend um, from Finca Maculata from Jorge. And the last coffee is from Mikave Estate. And we have Kevin with us, um, the producer, Woo, Shouts actually. out to the producer. <laughs> and it was a carbonic macerated geisha. That is an impressive lineup. So can you tell us a little bit, because coming up with a blend like that and finding these coffees, can you tell us a little bit about like how that journey has been to finding this particular coffee for today? Yeah, really good question. Um, so I get to taste a lot of good coffees. I'd say I'm very lucky. And sometimes I just taste coffees that, I, that hits me emotionally. And there haven't been many coffees that have been able to do that. But these three have been, and I was thinking, is there a way I can kind of make them complement each other and take what is good in each part and put them all together? And so that's what I did. So talking about blending, yeah. I'm very new to the coffee game, and mm -hmm. so I'm working on my signature blend. Okay. <laughs> Do you think blends are really kind of where the coffee industry is going? because the whole is greater than the sum, or do we kind of stick with the single origin to let something shine? I think they, they, they can coexist. I don't think like the blend is the ultimate um, goal of specialty coffee. I think single origin is very important. I think what blend does is that it shows people that just like in wine, like we can create new flavors, new aromas. It just depends on what we want. Like if we want to taste a terroir, we can have a single origin. But if we want to create something that is more personal of our own, like as a brewer, I feel like, um, okay, so we have the producer that does the work. I can control the brewing parameters. But the blending part is more like a piece of art that I get to control. And I think that's a fun part about it. Absolutely. Yeah. So who did you bring onto the stage? Do you want to introduce these two gentlemen for yes. us? Yes. OK, so this is Marco, my coach, um, who's been helping me throughout everything. And this is Kevin from Mikava Estate, so the producer of the last coffee that I'm using in this blend. So let's start with you, Marco. Um, tell us a little bit about um, Charity's journey and how you like, got to know each other, what the last couple of months have been. So um, the last, uh, so we got to know each other from the uh, coffee, the coffee industry in France, and uh, we started to collaborate, especially for the nationals uh, this year, and uh, also we participated to the coffee good spirit competition. So we kind of did two competition back to back. <laughs> it was kind of, uh, let's say, really interesting. <laughs> it was exciting. Lots of, uh, lots of time, lots of tasting, lots of uh, training. So, but I was, I was a competitor like back in the days because I've been in coffee for 12 years now. But I never, I always struggled just to feel calm and confident uh, with the judges. So it was really interesting to see how, sh how quick she was basically uh, learning like a script and how natural was showing to the, to the, to the judges. Because I think it's also one important part on, of the competition. Of course, all the competitors today, they had incredible coffee. So all, I think it's important to show to the judges that we also care about the customer experience, absolutely. Absolutely, right? Because the judges are your customer here. Now, you said you're a competitor. Talk about some of the differences from being a coach and a competitor. Did you find it better to be the coach? Uh, I still get white hair from the stress, so uh, <laughs> I stress uh, either way. I'm, I, w I think I will stress way more on stage. So, but on, in backstage, I basically can just, yeah, being helpful and... Uh, the idea for me when you coach is that your competitor shouldn't be stressed when he goes on stage. So... Probably she trusts me on the way how I prepare, clean, and make everything shine. So, <laughs> more than that. 
Perfect. <laughs> guy really good with a bar towel. I got exactly. you. Exactly. <laughs> so, Charity, um, can we ask you to brew your coffee for us? Of course. Excellent. Of course, be my guest. And um, Kevin, tell us a little bit about your journey with Charity, if you want to. Yeah, it, it started, uh, Charity contacted us, and um, it, it's unfortunate. My father, Paul, uh, and Charity have been in constant communication as far as what lots, uh, sending samples, and uh, receiving the feedback, I think, is also very vital and very important. Um, so, you know, first time meeting Charity in the flesh, I think it was an amazing performance, and, um, you know, Dad, it, it made Dad really proud. So, appreciate that. Thank you. <laughs> Thank That's really Paul. awesome. That is super incredible to actually meet for the first time here at Expo, right? So, uh, but also talk about what the importance of the relationship between a producer and, for lack of a better term, a barista or a brewer is. Can you kind of, like, she's helped shining some, some light on the producing. She, yeah, she is doing a great job. It's, it's a community. Um, and um, it, communication between the different types of coffees and, and what the competitors are looking for. Um, and then new innovation techniques, um, new uh, methods of fermentation, different types of coffees to present to competitors is one of the things that I, I think that my father does pretty well at. Absolutely, absolutely. It's all about communication and collaboration, right? Like that's what we're here doing at the table. Absolutely. So um, can you walk us through the flavor? You don't have to do the whole thing again. Don't worry. <laughs> Just tell us briefly, like, uh, what we're going to taste. Okay. So it's very orange-based, I'd say, like orange and floral. So in the beginning, you will have lavender and orange and the aromas and a little bit of mandarin. And then on the palate, it evolves a lot between orange, red grapes, and then the aftertaste is more on like marmalade, a little bit bitter orange marmalade, and some dried apricots. And um, tell us a little bit about the brewer that you've picked. Like okay. how do you choose a brewer for this competition? So I, I've always used the switch like for, com for competitions and even at my shop in France, I always use the switch because I just feel like there's so many ways you can play around with it. You can play with the switch, you don't have to use the switch, you can change your dripper. And so what I did here is that I replaced it with a plastic Mugen dripper instead of having the glass um, usual dripper. And what this does is two things. Number one, higher heat retention. And number two, you also have these star-shaped groove lines and it's flat inside. So you have no more channeling, which is great. Can you tell me about your filter? Because uh, mm -hmm. I want to know what, all about that. Yes, sorry? I want to know all about your filter because I'm trying to up my coffee okay. game. So and then the go. filter paper I'm also using today of Cafec, it's the Abaca Plus which has given me the steadiest cups and the cleanest cups I've ever tasted. Um, and I put 14 grams of coffee in here to 190 grams of water. And the water TDS is 9, 120 ppm. Can you tell me how to get the calcium flakes out of my kettle? I uh, recently uh, started getting into the drops, and all of a sudden these just flakes are going around. Really? What do I do I for that? Is water that hard here in the U.S.? It is, apparently, <laughs> yeah. Really? Okay, hang Some on. Some place is. Okay. It's okay. <laughs> it's, not, it's not you. Um, I think, like, prevention is probably, I mean, I don't want to ask this for you, but, I mean. I clean my kettle every two weeks. Yeah, but. The, <laughs> I'd say, like, vinegar and, um. Bicarbonate de soda, baking soda. Oh, okay. Yeah. Oh, citric acid. Citric acid. All right. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. And then once it's clean, you use better water. Go. Got it. <laughs> yes, yes, yes. I learned. Now I know. America, we got hard Are water. Are you guys re ready to smell from this? Oh, yes. From this special carafe. Eric. Tell us more about this. So this carafe is actually designed by my other coach, Kamal, from Archers in Dubai. And it's very special because it has two inner ridges. So as you see, as I swirl, it creates all these oxygen bubbles. So the turbulence releases more aroma, so that for the judges, once they smell it, they can smell everything more clearly. Since we don't have a lot of time on stage, like, I think it's important that they get all the aromas quickly. Absolutely. So do you guys want to smell it? There you go. So usually orange, mandarin, a little 100%. bit of lavender. If the aren't, world aren't we lucky? <laughs> the world doesn't know what we just smelled. I feel so lucky right now. <laughs> sorry, guys. Sorry. This is amazing. Absolutely amazing. Okay, I don't have a lot. I'm so sorry. We're going to have to... That's okay. Sip. We're not picky. No, 
I'm happy to just oh, enjoy. On. Exactly. We're just here for the coffee. Yes. So can you tell us a little bit about your journey getting to the world stage? Ooh. How was qualifiers in nationals in France? I've only seen it from the U.S. side, so I'm interested to see it from the abroad side. Okay, so we only have nationals in France. Um, this one's for you. This one's so for much. you. Please enjoy. This one's Always for you. a competitor. And, yeah. So okay, I'll take the smallest one. There we go. Santé. Enchanté. Santé. 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 <laughs> Um, so my journey here, uh, the nationals, <laughs> okay. Don't, don't I'll, mind me. <laughs> I'll just be here falling in love with your coffee. How Please, amazing is that? I yeah, cannot sorry. stop. This is the, sorry to whoever I said was the best before, but you got trumped. <laughs> <laughs> but yes, please talk about your journey. I'm sorry. Um, the nationals was hard. It was very, very competitive this year. We had really good competitors, um, competitors who have won in the past. Or, yeah, it was, it was like doing one world and then coming to do another world. And you also did SIGs, too, right? Yes, I also did SIGs. So talk about maybe a little bit of the journey. Coming up with two separate presentations and having to do two, you know, you have to do a brewer's and you got to come up with an alcoholic drink. Okay, so you have to be kind of crazy, first of all. You have to really want this. Because That's like for sure. <laughs> yeah, it's brewers. not cheap I know either. a few competitors no. who do more than one, and they are definitely Yeah, and Brewer's Cup was in nuts. end of January, and then March was Coffee and Good Spirits. I just like coffee and drinking, and so I thought, what better way to learn about drinking than to compete? And so Coffee and Good Spirits was kind of just like a f an experience for me. It was my first time. I just wanted to learn. And I collaborated with producers and also bartenders because I didn't know anything about bartending. I couldn't even shake a shaker properly. So with the help of many, many people, um, somehow we made magic happen. And yeah, we managed this year. I was coached very well this year. And Do you have a favorite <laughs> alcohol? Um, I mean, wine is what I go to usually. Red or wine? You know they're French, right? <laughs> uh, uh, Do they do wine in France? <laughs> kind of, yeah. I, mean, I thought it was just chartreuse. <laughs> uh, kind of, yeah. Well, I mean, uh, hot chocolate with chartreuse, if Ooh. you get to try, it's yeah, the best it delicious, winter really. drink ever. <laughs> green or yellow? Uh, green, green, of course. Oh, oh of <laughs> course, of course. Do you have a favorite alcohol? I would have to say um, a microbrew IPA. Oh. Okay. Very niche. Because very appropriate it, for yeah. the for the it, circumstances yeah. as well. It does share a, quite a bit of the flavors as coffee does. So. Absolutely. I not too much about myself, but I'm a sober person, and so part of the reason why I'm in coffee is because of things like this. I can't drink whiskey because yeah, you know, I'd have too much fun. We wouldn't be having a good time <laughs> up here. I'd say That'd be irresponsible. <laughs> yes. So, um, what has been your biggest challenge leading up to this moment? Ooh. Um, too many, but I think the biggest for me was compulsory. I think, uh, so I came on the world stage actually two years ago in Melbourne for the first time representing France. And my biggest lesson from that was compulsory is very, 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 very important. And so I went back and this year I spent almost 90% of my time training for, training for compulsory and spent a bit of time for open service, but I really wanted to kind of learn the most I can about brewing because compulsory is not just about brewing a not so or an average coffee. It's about understanding how to brew. Like what parameters can you change under sh such a short amount of time. And so I think compulsory was my biggest challenge. And Absolutely. I mean, you're, you're kind of blind going in. You're just like, here we go. We're going to yeah. brew a coffee. That's it's the same coffee, but all 12 of us can brew it differently. So. 100%. This is what I find fascinating about coffee, and I want to ask about having to work with your roasters, right? Because the coffee does come from your producers, but then your roaster is another big partner, yes. light, medium, dark, right? Can you talk about how you came up with working with the roaster and that collaboration to come up with the, yes. the colors? So I'm kind of lucky. Um, actually, I own a roastery in France called Mauclair. And also my other coach, Kamal, um, owns another roastery, uh, Archers in UAE. And so he helped me a little bit with the Mikava, whereas we did the work with the Eugenoides and the Abu. And so it was kind of easy. Like I just tasted and I told them what I wanted to be changed. And they're like, okay, we're gonna try something else. And then we keep tasting and yeah. Come up with it, absolutely. Yeah. But it's that level of trust. I, I love is. that. I, love I, I trust them 100%, 200%. So, Charity, one final question. Is there anyone 
that you haven't thanked yet that you still want to thank? Ooh. Like this is your this is your moment. Just I wish I had another ten more minutes for this to thank everyone that I could thank. This There's is your two. moment, though. Okay. Take it away. Well, thank you first of all, my mom and Marco that have been here, following me to Chicago, my friends and family, friends that are here. Um, Sponsors that have helped me with equipment and also all the other producers. Um, yeah, the French SEA, um, judges, volunteers. And also everyone in France that helped me with compulsory. I spent a lot of days with the team in Kawa, training, 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 and everyone sending me like free coffee. So it's been a lot. <laughs> it's been a ride. Yeah. All right. It is time for you to enjoy. And thank you, Archers and Kamal, for helping me with the Mikava as well. Perfect. Thank yeah. you so much. Thank you for this delicious cup of coffee. Incredible. We're going to leave you to relax, yes. enjoy this moment, and uh, hopefully we'll see you at the end of the day again. Yes. Can Wait. I get a huge round of applause for Charity? Give it up, thank Chicago. You. Come on.